Hello everyone and welcome back to The Great Book of Grudges. My name is Nathan and we're back with some more SFO Grimhammer showcases. The beta for its newest patch, The Land of Wealth, has just launched, which means that you can now try out all the stuff I've been showcasing and the stuff that I still need to showcase today. As always, I do have to remind you that this is indeed a beta and it is a standalone mod, so you just have to go into the workshop and just download that and start a new game. There's a variety of different campaign changes, not only for quality of life reasons, but for all races that are playable in Total War Warhammer 3. In today's video we're going to look around the changes to Sunesh and Nikari, a faction which is admittedly pretty good as it stands in vanilla. There's a lot of things that do make it quite decent and very interesting and fun to play throughout campaign. But there's a few things that were needed just to give it a little bit more spice, especially since every other race has gotten some changes, just to bring it online with everything else. First we'll talk about the changes to control. So control is very interesting as it's obviously been changed radically for SFO Grimhammer. So control affects agent success chance faction-wide, which is going to be very good for you as a Suneshi player if you're trying to establish cults and if you want agents around spreading corruption, this is all very good for you. It also grants vigor loss reduction and minuses to the enemy campaign movement range province-wide, which overall is pretty good, especially if you're going to be starting up a little empire within the empire. Some people do like that, it's actually quite fun, because it gives you a little variety of enemies to fight and it's not in a corner of the map. There's also another benefit where lower control increases building income and not lower it like it does for other factions. This is because it's a Sinesh. If it's good, it's good, and if it's bad, it's still kind of good for you. Raiding stance now gives you plus 5% replenishment rate, which allows you to keep moving and raiding to get a little bit more extra income. It's quite needed for the Sineshi faction, that's the very, very obvious thing. And while I don't have it shown on screen, the port chain lowers recruitment costs province-wide, which will make it beneficial for you in the future as we have seen through data mining that Nikari is likely to start an off one which means there's a lot of ports and it will make the conquering of off one very very easy. So we had a few changes to the infrastructure buildings and I'm going to cycle through them and tell you all the details. One thing that isn't listed is the resource chains. Low control increases technology research rates and at tier 3 it lowers enemy campaign movement range. This is obviously province wide but if we go on to the actual infrastructure stuff we've got favored income change. Income generated has been replaced with income increase in adjacent and provinces and you'll also get a boost faction wide to the seduction of units which is obviously very helpful depending on what type of army you have and what your enemies have and you just want to get rid of some units. The excess change changes replenishment effect as it's lowered but changed the province wide and campaign movement range bonus effect added to a province wide meaning that you'll be able to move around a lot better and it's just overall better for defending your borders which is kind of strange but you know Scarbrand does want to murder you very early on. The dominance chain now has upkeep reduction effect for lords and heroes, province-wide effect added which is obviously very beneficial if you're starting to build your armies there. And finally the devotee chain, construction cost reduction in adjacent provinces. Again very good for Sinesh. Money isn't too easy to come with, you can get it later on but early on unless you're going into the Sineshi realm you're going to suffer so these benefits will make you expand a little better. Basic military buildings will have some active effects on you when you are under siege. This this is all armies in the same province and will benefit you with extra charge bonus, extra speed or even increased missile resistance. This means that if anything starts attacking you, you're going to be a bit better off to be able to defend yourself plus extra speed on an already fast faction. You can only imagine how fast your seekers will go. Advanced military buildings on the other hand will have loads of bonuses active without you being under siege such as even reducing enemy unit mass meaning that your charges are going to get a lot tastier, lots more increased unit experience per turn. I'm cycling through them right now but they're very very good. Unit experience overall is pretty good because that means that you can build up your forces in your areas and then go out to strike if you've got the time or you've got other armies already in fighting so you don't mind leaving an army here. But overall, it's very, very good and it allows you to be a bit more defensive over the territories that you've worked so hard to corrupt. There is a new building which is known as the Icon of Pleasure that affects both own and enemy agent action, boosts up your success chance for ambushing and also your defense against ambushing and also removes any enemy corruption. You also see some other benefits here, for example if you have high control you can be better at defending against ambushes, this is faction wide so you can stack it 
and if your control is low, well, you'll be better at causing ambushes, once again, faction-wide, so it's stackable, and this means that you can be pretty good. Not so much now, as we're not dealing with too many ambushes, but imagine against those pesky Skaven in the future. Manifestations like the other Mono God factions have had their effects changed around a little bit, and they also spread a lot more corruption. This is very important for the Mono God factions, as so much is tied to corruption, so now you've got a better way to doing so, and a more of a reason to remember about the manifestations, because let's be honest, a lot of us do forget. I do that very often. So perforating cults have been nerfed a little bit. In cults in general, you see, it used to be a thousand devotees, now it's turned to 1,500, and the devotee gains from buildings have been lowered a little bit. Mind you, it was a bit too overpowered, and you did have that active too much, so it kind of makes sense to bring it more in a balancing terms. Disciple armies have been changed a little bit, so their spawn has been changed to minus 250 devotees rather than just minus 500. However, their upkeep has been changed to minus 50%, up from minus 25%, but they've also got a melee attack, charge bonus, leadership, and ward save bonuses added to the spawn army, so they're overall much, much better, and they'll act more like a generic army rather than just something that you spawn and then get rid of after a battle. You can use them for a few different things, and I found them a lot more useful in general. And lastly, we do have some changes coming to effect to the campaign and Nikari's own traits. There are some other changes overall, but I'm leaving that for you to discover. However, in the campaign trait, we do get minus 2% vigor loss reduction per rank achieved for all units added. And for Nakari's trait, we have enemy leadership reduction effect change to province-wide from region-wide. So overall, good changes. Alright, so let me talk about my experiences with the SFO Grimhammer Land of Wealth patch in the early access phase. Honestly, I had a lot of fun. It still feels very vanilla-ish, and that's a good thing, because the idea is these are quality of life improvements to make the factions just a bit better, and the general thing with Sunesh is very much the same. The gameplay doesn't change. It only makes you a bit more defensive, which is kind of needed, mostly because the garrisons were a bit bad, and they've been redone here a little bit. And in general, it's really, really good. Now, I think some people would think that this is a bit of bias, because obviously Sunesh is my favorite faction. It's well known that. But I'd say that overall, all the factions are getting pretty good balancing. I had a lot of fun with this. I'm still not a fan of Nakari's start position, mainly because we've seen the data mine for the Immortal Empires. So I think that that would be better. But in general, I think it's a good campaign. It definitely helps when you're fighting on harder difficulties and Scarbrand comes for you. Having some defensive bonuses really is beneficial because Scarbrand can be very, very annoying and you just see his armies coming straight for you very early on, especially since you started Faction War with a Cornate Faction 2 and also that Warriors of Chaos one, which you want to dominate, but they do cause some issues when you're fighting two different things. So yeah, I would say try this out. The beta is out now, so if you've got any suggestions on things to change and so on, let Venris know. Leave them in the comments below. They're still checking out these videos, and I'll see you all again very, very soon with our last showcase.